listen to our gospel lesson for this morning as we hop into ordinary time. Today's gospel comes to us from the gospel of Mark, chapter 2, starting with verse 23 through chapter 3, verse 6. Listen to God's word. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisee said to him, look, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? How he entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of presence, which is not lawful for anyone but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. They were watching to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then Jesus said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger and was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are here because we long to follow you and because we want to hear from you how we might be your disciples, how we might know your love. Draw near to us in this time of worship that we might be strengthened and made whole. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I grew up as a member of an in-between generation. There are lots of memes about my age group that are out there. But let me say that I am old enough to know what blue laws were and young enough that in my lifetime they were not fully enforced. In this in-between space that I occupied, rather, the mall closed at 5 o'clock instead of 9 o'clock, and there were no soccer practices or dance lessons or any extracurricular activities on Sunday mornings. There was this expectation, rather, that not everything was available for full consumption on a Sunday, but we would go to McDonald's after worship if we behaved as we were sitting in the pews. And when we were old enough, we would go for driving practice with dad, and either McDonald's or driving practice would lead us to the grocery store where the grocery shopping would be done for the entire week and then we'd finish our homework and play with neighbors and watch Spider-Man reruns on TV and grandma would come over for dinner. So I grew up with this, aware with this awareness that Sunday was different than other days. But yet my own observance and observation of what was our Christian Sabbath was that those differences that set Sunday apart were differences of our own making. We were trying to retain a semblance of Sabbath keeping, but the rules were not the same for everyone, nor were the ideas of each household or each community or even each store. 
For most of us, as for most Christians, I surmise, keeping Sabbath meant going to church, setting aside some time to worship God together. But that each family figured out what the rest meant for them. Now it's interesting as we read through our texts today, texts that were written across millennia, that Sabbath keeping has been an integral practice for the people of God, and yet a practice for whom God's people have no one definition. Sabbath keeping has been essential to God's people since God's people journeyed from captivity in Egypt to the promised land. Yet even as we recall this commandment, we see within the whole of scripture itself, there are different perspectives on what it might mean for one to observe the Sabbath. We see that rest is inherent to this practice of faith, but there is not even consensus on what rest might look like, or even a shared understanding of why rest is important in the first place. For those fleeing captivity in Egypt and for all class of person and even for livestock, scripture tells us rest on the Sabbath is essential. And for those of us who think of a seventh day of rest, we might even be reminded that our faith contains a story of God resting too. But why? When the Pharisees and disciples encounter each other in our text for today, the question of why and how and what to do on the Sabbath was just as dynamic in Jesus' day as it might be for any of us who desire to keep Sabbath in a world where now soccer teams do practice on Sundays and we can purchase anything at any hour of the day or night in any time zone from anywhere. Sunday doesn't look very different for us unless we make it different ourselves. And so the disciples and the Pharisees, both people of faith striving to do their best, greet one another in grain fields and in the temple with tension and confusion Enough so that those disciple, that the Pharisees leave their encounter with Jesus ready to end his ministry. So what does Jesus say about Sabbath keeping? The text that we hear today in Mark's gospel gives us some clarity perhaps, even as it raises some questions for all of us. A commentator writes that the idea that humanity was made for the Sabbath continues to be a wildly popular theology, that God created the law and humanity needs to live up to it or else we are lost. Now in that theology, God is chiefly known as holy and humans have to achieve a certain level of holiness through following laws or practicing purity rituals in order to be acceptable to God. But the alternative theology which Jesus poses here is that the Sabbath was made for humanity. It is in that sense that God is chiefly known as love and the laws and purity rituals are for humanity's own good or even better, they offer ways that humanity can respond to God's grace with gratitude. Now this idea invites us to ponder that perhaps God rested on that seventh day of creation, not because God was tired, but perhaps God was noticing God's own image in humanity, in the creation that God had made. And perhaps God invites us today to do the same. Perhaps the invitation of Jesus and of God, the Creator, and the Holy Spirit is one that invites us to Sabbath keeping by changing our perspective and reestablishing our priorities so that we might view ourselves and our neighbors differently. 
so that we might honor the image of God in ourselves and in all of humankind. Another commentator goes on to say that this day of rest is more than a symbol of deliverance. It's a concrete expression of liberation to those who labor during the week and are under authority, employees, immigrants, and animals. Loving God means loving neighbor in the concrete practice of rest from work, regardless of your social and economic status. What does it mean to rest? What does it mean to rest in God's provision and care? What does it mean to rest as a community? What does it mean to rest as a people of faith? Several years ago, my husband and I rang in a new year, spending New Year's Day in our PJs, watching a terrible um, made-for-TV movie based on Stephen King's book, The Langoliers, that took hours to watch, reading books and napping throughout. Somehow, this day has stuck with us in our minds because it was a day of rest, of not leaving a couch, of not requiring an effort, of watching a silly television show, of reading a book in between, and napping whenever we liked because nothing was so important that it would command our attention or our effort. I'm sure we ate that day, though it's possible it was one of the few occasions in my adult life when I have allowed myself a dinner of chips and dip. And I am sure that we, I am sure that we were relaxing in our home all day, but we often now, probably 15 or more years later, refer to this day as a day of rest to which we aspire as now demands and expectations pile up throughout our day and week. So what does rest look like to you? It probably does not mean watching the leg and leers on television on New Year's Day or eating chips and dip for dinner. But how might we enter into a Sabbath-keeping invitation to regularly honor the image of God in ourselves and in others? so that our efforts and our energy might not be solely about labor or consumption. It might not be about engaging in a workforce or demanding the efforts of another. Another commentator writes, you are not just born to center your entire existence on work and labor. You were born to heal, to grow, to be of service to yourself and community to practice, to experiment, to create, to have space, to dream, and to connect. So people of God, what does it mean to rest? There is a rest that comes with a good night's sleep. And there is a rest that comes when you know that you can be fully yourself There is a rest that comes when you are assured you will be accepted for who you are authentically, when you don't need to put any of your energy into wearing a mask, when you can step out from behind any hiding place and know that you are free to be fully yourself. There is a rest that comes when you know that there will be food on your plate, when you know that there is enough money in your bank account to keep your phone on and your water running and your roof over your head, not just for the next day, but for the next month. There is a rest that comes when you are assured that you are heard, that your concerns, that your problems, that your hopes 
that your needs, that your ideas are recognized and received by others, that your feelings are validated. There is a rest that comes when you forgive another who has harmed you, when you release the weight of the burden you are carrying, and there is a rest that comes when you know that you have been forgiven. When wounded relationships begin to change, there is a rest that comes when you know that you belong, when you can show up just as you are and be seen and accepted. There is a rest that comes when you do not have to keep a secret, when you no longer need to hold information that's too heavy to carry, there is a rest that comes when you know peace. When your life is not formed or informed by conflict or violence or fear. What does it mean to rest? Friends, as Jesus encountered the Pharisees, the hungry disciples, and the man with a hand that was withered, Jesus is reminding us that the practice to the practice of sabbath keeping is not is not simply about resting from labor but about embracing one's freedom and the freedom of all it is about dropping the hold of that which ensnares us or entangles us or keeps us or keeps exploiting us Rather, Jesus invites us to rest from the expectations that others have of us or the exploitation of our culture or the things that tie us or others down to living outside of God's call and intent. Jesus invites us to a practice of Sabbath keeping in which the image of God is honored in ourselves and in one another. Friends, how might we keep the Sabbath? How might we remember that we are God's people, fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image? How might we remember that we are not the only ones formed by God's grace? How might we live in a way that honors God's image in all? Perhaps I'm raising more questions than giving answers, but that's often what happens when we encounter scripture. And so on this, the Lord's Sabbath, I invite you to sit with these questions and to know that Sabbath might look different, even just a little bit from each one of us. And it might look different today than it did when we were 10. But I invite you to consider how God is calling you. How is God calling you to rest? and to create the space in the world so that others may rest from their labor too. How is God calling you and calling us to create a community and a world in which each might live according to their authentic God-given image and know they are whole and well? How might we together honor God's image in one another. Friends, we have opportunities as we step into this Pride Month to give thanks for the inclusive and diverse community of which God has called us to be a part. But we have an opportunity to live into this call, not only here at ELPC, or during certain months of the year, but always, so that we together might fully 
welcome all of God's siblings, all of God's creatures, and all of our siblings. On this Sabbath, may we honor God by honoring God's image in one another and in ourselves. And maybe think about doing that not just once a week, but always. As we approach the table together, may we remember that all are welcome here and around God's table of grace. And as we step out into the world today, might we know that we step into a world that is beloved by God. And may we find even a few minutes to rest. May it be so. Amen.